Uh, good evening all. Myself, uh, Dr. Manavi J.B. Karasman, Ashton Professor Department of Psychiatry, and uh, I will be a moderator for uh, this seminar. I welcome Honorable Vice Chancellor, uh, Dr. Ramesh Garadhar, sir, uh, Dean uh, Faculty of Medicine and Principal Dr. Arun Patil, sir, uh, speakers and all audience. Uh, this seminar is hosted by uh, Department of Psychiatry, BLD, Deemed to University, Sri VM Party Medical College Hospital uh, Research Center, Vijaypur. Uh, we have uh, uh, two topics uh, for today's webinar. The uh, first will be an introduction to temper tantrum by Dr. Sandosh Ramdul, followed by diagnostic approach and management of tantrum outburst among children by Pradipta Mujumdas. Uh, so we have two speakers, uh, Dr. Santosh Ramdur and uh, Dr. Mujumdar. So a uh, kind notice to the uh, audience that uh, please keep your uh, mics in mute mode. We'll have uh, two sessions and questions will be uh, asked at the end and kindly uh, put the questions in the question box. Uh, first, uh, we'll start with the first sessions. First session that is introduction to temporal tantrum by Dr. Santosh Ramdur. I will give a brief introduction about uh, Dr. Santosh Ramdur. Uh, Dr. Santosh Ramdur finished his MBBS from uh, JNMC Belgium and MD Psychiatry from Ames, uh, uh, Delhi. Uh, sir has more than 10 years of experience in the field of psychiatry. He has more than 21 publications in various journals. Uh, currently, he is working as Associate Professor in Department of Psychiatry, uh, BLD Medical College, Vijaypur. Now I will hand over the mic to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Munavijay. Uh, and uh, I uh, respected uh, uh, Vice Chancellor, sir, Ms. Biradar, sir, respected uh, Principal, sir, uh, Arvind Patil, sir, and uh, respected uh, Head of Department of Psychiatry, uh, uh, Chokimet, sir. Uh, today uh, we have a webinar on uh, temper tantrums uh, in children's and I'm going to talk on uh, introduction to the temper tantrums and uh, subsequently the diagnostic approach will be uh, spoken by Dr. Pradeep Tamajindar. So uh, let's go to the uh, slides. Okay. Uh, introduction to the temper tantrums. So, so what is uh, temper tantrums? Temper tantrums are common part of the child's development. Tantrums are most common between two and four years of the age. They can be as short as 20 seconds or go on for hours. So during the tantrums, child may run around screaming and yelling, bang her head, Found his fist, kick and bite, cry, roll around on the floor, hold her breath. But don't worry, if this happens, the child will naturally breathe when they need to. So let us go into the uh, proper what is temper tantrums. And uh, uh, my, my colleague will go to say that why we have chosen this topic in detail. Uh, but, but the temper tantrums are the uh, common among the most common childhood behavioral problems, and most of the times uh, they are the reasons for referral to the child psychiatrist. And if you look the statistics, uh, two-year-old uh, children, around 20% of them, they have a temper tantrums. Usually, like they'll be of short lasting, like three years old, it is 18%, and four years old, it's 10%. So you can see that the, as the age increases, the uh, prevalence will keep decreasing. And between one to three years of age, around five to seven percent of the children, they have a temper tantrums lasting at least 15 minutes, uh, three or more times per week of the children. Means they, they need a clinical attention. Most of the times, if it is if they last for less than three minutes, and uh, uh, usually they uh, spontaneously they concern as they become old. Uh, tantrum behavior may continue into a late childhood and adolescence sometimes. Uh, if these behavior are associated with uh, this age group includes becoming withdrawn or sometimes violent behavior or having verbal outburst. 
the tantrums can occur not only in the home but outside in the outside the home like in the public place uh, like restaurant playgrounds grocery stores and malls and school so tantrums usually they starts around at the age of 12 to 15 months and as the toddlers becomes more mobile and more aware of their likes and dislikes Uh, it is so common that it is considered to be a part of the typical childhood development between two to three years. At least once or twice a day, they tend to happen. And if you look into the uh, boys versus girls, the boys, uh, the onset among the girls is bit earlier compared to the boys. Uh, but there is no gender difference at the age of the twelve months. Uh, but as it progress, uh, the tantrums they occur. earlier in the girls and uh, the severity is more among the boys compared to the girls so some engage in the tantrums behavior for the short period of time whereas some continue for an hour or two so on and average like median duration is of 3 minutes in 18 to 60 months like that is one and a half years to up to 5 years old children 75% of the tantrums uh it usually lasts less than 5 minutes after the age of 3 as the language skills develop children tend to throw less tantrums because usually the temper tantrums decrease in severity frequency and duration as the child ages there is no magical age when tantrums disappear means like we cannot exactly say that when the tantrums uh, goes uh it it depends on the uh, child and also that depends on the verbal development of the child uh, if the verbal development is develops early then probably like they expresses the uh, their feelings their emotions through the uh, verbal tone and if that is not they it may get prolonged uh, older children becomes more sophisticated in their way of throwing the temper tantrums So this is one of the photographs just to show there are several reasons why why the the children they show a temper tantrums uh, ch- sometimes the children who are very tired sometimes they are hungry if they are ill or frustrated may have limited coping abilities resulting in the temper tantrums uh, children often throw a temper tantrums to express the frustrations and also to demand the attentions from their parents from their caregivers and uh, from uh, uh, near and dear persons and also obtain a tangible objects and uh, also to avoid undesirable activities for an example if they don't want to go to the school or if uh, whatever the things they don't want to do so during that time they may show uh, temper tantrums so as i said tangible objects may be like they want to have an access to a mother or to the father so as i said as many as 5 to 20% of the children have a severe temper tantrums that are both frequent and uh, disruptive so means like uh, they are occurring many times in a day and sometimes which involves an injury to the child or any throwing of the objects or anything it's a disruptive so these tantrums are considered to be abnormal if the child or others are injured or if the property is destroyed tantrums accompanying sleep disorders uh, for an example sometimes uh, sleep terrors uh, then uh, frequent waking in the sleep uh, like sometimes screaming or uh, aggressive behavior or anorexia may signal an underlying emotional problems and uh, most of the times in between the tantrums uh, children uh, they have a normal mood and uh, they interact very well with other people uh, but if the in between the tantrums if their mood continues to be in the negative status and behavior also continues to be in the negative side and uh, recurrent tantrums at the schools are considered to be a uh, very abnormal so that's my uh, end of my uh, presentation so the questions will be taken at the end and uh, thank you for uh, watching uh, our presentations it's from the department of psychiatry bld university bm patel medical college thank you uh, i'll hand over my mic to our moderator 
Dr. Manoj J. Kaswan, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Thanks for your uh, very informative introduction. Uh, what exact uh, what is what is meant by temper tantrum and how it all presents and uh, what is the need of management of it. So now we will move, move to the next session. Uh, that is diagnostic approach and management of uh, tantrum outbursts among the children by uh, Pradipta Mujumdar sir. So uh, before that, I will uh, give a brief introduction about uh, Pradipta sir. Uh, Dr. Mujumdar began his medical career from the Medical College of Kolkata. Uh, from, uh, from there, he moved to Delhi uh, to finish his uh, MD psychiatry, where he did a uh, one and a half year of residential uh, senior resident course. So then, uh, sir has uh, did his residency, residency in St. Luke's uh, Roosevelt Hospital, New York City. Although psychiatry residency is for four years, but he fast tracked the residency in three years and joined the Children Children Hospital in Philadelphia for fellowship in child psychiatry. Apart from training in psychopharmacology, uh, Dr. Mojumdar received formal training in cognitive behavior therapy, psychodynamic psychotherapy, and ecosystem structured family therapy. After completion of the fellowship in child psychiatry, uh, sir started working solely with uh, children and teenagers and their unique issues. Currently, he works for Wellspan Health, Health, which is the largest hospital system in the central uh, Pennsylvania uh, as a child and adult psychiatrist and uh, site medical director, New York, USA. Other than these clinical uh, uh, responsibilities, he wears many hats in the administration. I welcome you, sir. I will hand over the mic for the uh, next session, sir. Uh, Dr. Pradipto. Thank you very much for the such a nice introduction and uh, welcome everybody. And uh, I would like to find some ways to share my screen and uh, let me start going. And uh, thank you everybody and uh, welcome to the presentation. Welcome to the uh, webinar today. I know that it's, it's past four o'clock uh, in India and uh, I'm just starting my day with my morning cup of coffee. And uh, I know that you must all be very tired. And, uh, but still, thank you for logging in and being part of this presentation. So when I was thinking about the topic for this webinar, uh, it was a little bit challenging to find the topic because, uh, because of um, we have uh, in the audience, we have a diverse range of expertise and uh, some are starting their professional career and some are already seasoned clinicians and uh, professionals. And uh, so this topic, I mean, is, is very near and dear to me because this is something that I do every day. And this is my li livelihood actually. And this is a topic that irrespective of your role in the, in the medical field, you can use among, you know, maybe on your own kids or maybe on some, you know, somebody that you know, or maybe even on the, um, on any patients that you are actually working on, kid, uh, I mean, younger kids. So what we are going to do today is that we are going to focus on the most practical part of the assessment and treatment. I mean, I'm not going to go into too much of theory here. Uh, medication management is not the primary focus of the presentation uh, for obvious reason, because for younger uh, ch children, your primary modality of treatment is going to be psychosocial or the behavioral intervention. And we'll focus on the most commonly used behavioral techniques because there are so many different kinds of techniques that has been used. Now, so as uh, Dr. Ramdur was talking about the various types of uh, temper tantrum and uh, what comprise of the unusual or kind of more severe kind of temper tantrums, I would say that whenever there is this unusual temper tantrum, you consider this as, a, as something like fever you know that there is something wrong and you need to find out the find out the source. So when you start finding the source, that is the assessment and be mindful about the uniqueness of the assessment of children and adolescents because uh, babies or children are not really a mini adult. That is proven in so many research. So they have unique issues. The uh, assessment style is different. Many times you have to use some toys, some you know innovative games to get some information and obtain the mental status of the of the, of the child. And the assessment of uh, temper tantrum will be similar to the other psychiatric evaluation of children and adolescents. But here, what we are going to do is that we are going to uh, pay a lot of emphasis on the family structure and the parenting. Like you get some sense about what is the relationship between mom and dad, 
whether they are together and you know like with the growing uh, society and uh, uh, there is the divorce rate is also increasing whether they are together or not how are their interaction what are the other adults involved in the ch child's life what is going on with the parents and so many things i mean as a matter of fact when you are assessing the child you cannot simply assess the child it is uh, is the whole family that you need to pay an attention to and your assessment starts as you see them in the waiting area when i was in india uh, i remember that my patients used to walk into my office rather than me going to greet them in the waiting area but greeting them in the waiting area can give you some sense about you know some of the uh, about about the family structure sometimes you know for example coming to see a psychiatrist or a therapist at such a young age at least in india is a big thing so when they are coming whether the whether both mom and dad have come or who has brought the kid how the kid is uh, sitting in the waiting area is he causing already disruption in the area or with what the kid is actually doing when the parents are waiting and how the family is waiting i mean are they scattered or they're sitting together and things like that because many times remember that when they are giving you history many times the parents will try to say that you know everything is great with our family i don't know what is happening and then you try to interview the child and parents together as well as separately and keep a note on how the child is uh, tolerating or uh, reacting to the temporary separation from the from the parents and obviously you know you get history from multiple sources parents caregiver child teachers and daycare now when i talk about that uh, get history from multiple sources i know that in india probably it will be a little bit challenging to get the history from teachers or daycare uh, i remember that uh, when i used to you know send a vendable checklist to for the teachers i mean many times i'll not get them back and that is a challenge so at least you know getting some sense about how the child is doing in school and daycares is going to be very very important and utilize various rating scales because in psychiatry uh, i know this is very subjective but uh, you try to be as objective as possible especially with the growing age of litigations and everything having some objective data to validate your treatment response treatment approach is very very important and when you are trying when you are starting the assessment you know like always understand the family structure understand the culture because the culture of family is so important especially when you go to a metropolitan city when there are so many families from so many different backgrounds are, are being present so you have to get some idea about what is the parenting style of the child or what is the parent how the parents kind of grew up what is the relationship what is the family structure is there is, is there a grandpa grandma or what are their roles in the family and and so on always get a very good description of the outburst this is this the description is going to help you with not only the diagnosis but also help you with the you know like assessing the you know the, the treatment plan for example what leads to the or what happens before the tantrum starts is it when somebody asks the child to do something and he will say no i don't want to do it and there is a temper tantrum okay are we dealing with an oppositional kid or is it like the whenever i ask my child to go to the school or when the child is with particularly this this teacher that is a problem so all right is it some sort of separation anxiety going on or is it because of the child has some sort of uh, you know conflict with the teacher or is it because of you know some kind of learning disorder that the child is having so that information is important then you focus on the behavior what happens during that time that is going to be helpful especially to formulate whether there is a safety plan required or not because many times the child can just yell and scream and cry but many times this is not the case i mean this they can start throwing things start hit banging can you know like knives and in this country whether there is a gun in, at home or not so very important then also find what the parents are doing when the when the tantrum is happening because many times remember that what parents do that doesn't that do not actually help rather it can cause more problem in perpetuating the symptoms and what happens after the tantrum is over that is very important because i have seen that many times the parents the child will get a hug from the parents when they throw a temper tantrum what a unique way to manage the temper tantrum the child throws a tantrum and you give a hug 
of course that is not recommended and you know so getting some sense about the consequences is very important and then as you go on with the go along with the history get all the information about when did it start anything happened at that time was there a new neighborhood kid at that time or what happened at the home was there any major change at home whether there was any loss or gain or whatever you know and and getting those information is important many times that those are the stressor that will precipitate the symptoms and the stressor among kids and teenagers are unique one of the biggest source of stressor can be school one of the biggest stressor can be just you know friends moving in a different area it can be loss maybe you know there is a, there was a there was a pet who recently died and the child is having a lot of temper outbursts possibly having some sort of adjustment to the to the death or grieving or so many things now and then when you are getting all the history get a good information about the parenting style because remember here parenting style is going to play a major role in the development of the and perpetuation of the symptoms and when you are trying to gather information about the parenting style you will be amazed to see that there are so many different types of parenting some parents are extremely authoritarian right like very strict no negotiation punishment is common reward is very less common and expectations are very high and there is no way that they are actually giving some sense how that the child can meet that expectation it goes from this end to being very permissive like you know whatever the child is doing all right you do i don't care and some are very uninvolved to the authoritative parenting which is a possibly the best kind of parenting like you have clear rules you have reasons explained why these rules are in place uh, and there are expectations and nurturing are both high so that the child actually knows that this is my expectation in the morning i have to get up and brush my teeth and i cannot just start watching cartoons and 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 watch youtube so and then you complete the other parts of the history get the medical history past psychiatric history always always keep a, a, a idea get, get some sense about the trauma history remember that probably not in uh, with india we don't have a trauma reporting system i mean as compared to the other countries i mean if there is an abuse history you have to report in this country i mean i i don't know about uh, if that is developed in india or not but trauma history is very under reported many times the child's temper tantrum and other symptoms can be because of some trauma and the child is cannot is not able to either the child is very scared to talk about it or many times something else is going on get sense about the suicidal homicidal behavior because remember one thing the 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 no the there is a is a myth or sometimes there is some sentiment that oh child doesn't doesn't have any suicidal thought okay yeah true to some extent in the sense that below 6 year of age people don't kids don't get a kind of good sense of what death actually means especially the irreversibility component of the death sometimes they will say things but they don't mean it but always you have to keep, keep a very good attention to those things because you don't want to lose a patient it is a it is it is it is too bad that a, that a young child's life can be lost always get some of the previous history developmentally say especially when you are suspecting probably autism spectrum as a you know kids with autism spectrum will have can have lot of temper tantrums and many times they can have sensory temper tantrum that can last for hours and then go for the family history especially important is whether there is a family history of psych issues substance use among parents what is the family background is there you know uh, is there any kind of criminal history of the parents or not all these kinds of things and your aim is to find out what is the associated symptoms because as i told you that the tantrums are tantrums are like fever you have to find what is the cause and the associated symptoms are going to guide you to finding some of the diagnosis so that you can plan and you know like you can provide the effective treatment for example when you are assessing the child are there, are there any history of extreme hyperactivity or is the child is not able to focus pay attention in the class having lot of problems in class all the very sweet child but you know like it's taking lot of impulsive decisions you know like uh, there is a very poor impulse control or the child is extremely oppositional you ask him to do something all right he is not going to do it it's high it's his way or highway or if the child has even more problems like you know like 
stealing, lying, or, you know, like property damage, or if there is a history of like, you know, fire setting or cruelty towards animal, whether it's actually having more severe, like, you know, conduct disorder, or if the child has developmental disorder or developmental issues, plus the child has a lot of, you know, like very challenging social skill, uh, cannot make friends, they have, they are in, in their own bubble, um, or whether they have, uh, you know, like unique uh, preference to certain things, restricted interest. Okay, or is it, uh, is a child having autism spectrum disorder? Now, the other issues are anxiety, as I was telling you that, um, you know, like what happens that leads to the temper tantrum? Uh, is it like every time the child is dropped in the school that the child will throw a temper tantrum? Is it because of, is it an indication of any separation anxiety? Or is it that the child is having some learning disorder that the child is terrified of going to school or is there is any any sort of bullying going on in school remember that these are many times we miss that part and we just think that okay this child is a bad kid he's just he throws temper tantrum all the time and pay attention to depression disruptive mood disorder and various other types of mood disorder learning disability various medical causes so once this assessment part is over, then you are, you are thinking about the treatment. So, you know, that's the main thing. The, the parents will come to you. All right, doctor, I, I got everything. So what do, you, what do you want me to do? So when we start talk about this, you know, as I told you that I would like to make it like, you know, useful for everybody. So at least this part, you know, this part is probably a little bit helpful for everybody. Uh, if you are in touch with any young chi child and uh, it's universal, I mean, all the, all the two-year-olds will have temper tantrum. And uh, so how you can reduce those normal temper tantrum. Uh, one thing is very important that you maintain a routine and schedule. Just remember one thing, just place yourself in a situation when say you show up for work and then all of a sudden your boss says that, you know what, today you are not doing this, you are doing something entirely different. How is that going to make you feel? Same thing happens for a child. Maintain a routine and schedule and let them know if there is any change in advance. Make sure that your toddler is well fed. As Dr. Ramdur was saying that, you know, hunger, uh, tiredness, these are the common causes of uh, temper tantrum and provide prompts and transition for any upcoming change. For example, you know, you don't say that, all right, stop playing and let's go for doing something. You give them a notice that when the game is over, it's time to take a bath and also help them skill building. One of the very common reason, inability to do or develop mastery over certain tasks help the child so that the child develops the skill and so that he doesn't have to throw a temper tantrum. And as a part of helping is that the child should ask for help when needed. That is part of teaching the coping skill. Yeah, I need some help. All right, a child may have difficulty in even asking for help. And whenever they are doing that, when they're developing the mastery, you're developing the skill, give them a lot of positive feedback. High five, yes, you did a good job. So that they feel like they feel like keep on going. And also, you know, give, give them choice so that that will help a small child to make some sort of decision. Do you want a blue ball or do you want a red ball? All right, like, uh, like a red ball, all right, very good. Then when we talk about the other, you know, the psychosocial interventions, there are huge, there are so many psychosocial interventions that those are done, like parent management training is a big thing. And in the parent management training umbrella, there is, Parent management training, Oregon model, incredible years program. There is, uh, you know, like non-compliant child training, PCIT, Define 10, Triple P, you name it. There are so many things out there. These trainings are kind of same with some difference in between, among them. And truly speaking, there is nothing wrong or right with any of these strategies, truly, truly speaking. And there is also cognitive behavior therapy, which is used, but um, we'll talk about it. There is, uh, you know, many other things, but here, what we are going to talk about is that we are going to talk about few of them, not a lot of things because of the time constraint. You need to know what does not work, like scare tactics does not work. Tough love does never work. Boot camp, I'll send you to boarding school. No, it never works. Or any kind of short-lived therapy. What does work is basically the PMT, parent management training. Uh, we often use PCIT, parent-child interaction therapy and cognitive behavior therapy. Now, we will talk about the PMT. What is PMT is the parent management training. It is one of the most commonly used method. And the, 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 the clinician will work with the parents primarily. 
uh, not with the kids. It's a, it's a therapy for the kid, but with the, with the parents. And this is given in individual session as well as in group session. And the aim is to improve a practice of positive parenting so that the relationship in between the parents and the child actually improves. So the child has a better compliance, you know, like shows better compliance. And the technique that we are going to describe here is from Russell Buckley's manual, okay? And the root is from the PMTO, like Parent Management Training, University of Oregon model. And there's a manualized treatment. So every session has specific handouts, specific session, and uh, there is homework assignment. So the, you know, the parents will get homework. All right, you cannot just ask the kids to do homework. Now you have homework and it is offered in group and individual. So what is done is that at the beginning of the, you know, of the whole, you know, say uh, program, at first there is a lot of teaching, like teaching parents, what is the typical cause of children misbehavior? Many times you will be amazed to see that the, the, the reason is right in front of their eyes, but they're not able to see it. And recognizing that in a family, the interaction is very reciprocal. Like parents often has a very skewed and unilateral view of the cause of the child, child's behavioral issues. Like they feel like the child is misbehaving only. All right, how are you behaving with the child? That is important because the child will learn things from you. It's very important to be a good, good role model. And many times it's parents' own emotion that can actually affect the effective parenting. I mean, what is what I mean by that is that say you have a long day at work, you don't have patience anymore, you go back home, and then your child says something, and then you basically you have a you have an outburst actually, but the child is a recipient at the recipient end. So you teach the parents also the basic principles of PMT. Remember that in the when I talk about the basic principle, it's basically we are going to use reinforcement and punishment for you know the medical students and other students who are here. Uh, reinforcement something that is that can increase a behavior, whereas the punishment is something that can decrease a behavior. And there are positive reinforcement when you add something to increase a behavior or a negative reinforcement when you remove something to increase a behavior. For example, you know, you sit in a car, you don't put the seat belt on, the beep, beeping noise. That's annoying beeping noise. Unless you put the seat belt is tied, you, you, that beep doesn't stop. Punishment, something is added to decrease. Positive punishment is something that is added to decrease a behavior. For example, speeding ticket. All right, you got a fine for your speeding. So the next time you don't do it. So the behavior goes down. Or the negative punishment, something is removed to increase the like, uh, I mean, to decrease the likelihood of behavior. You know, you have, you did this, so your toys are gone. Helping the parents to use those skills consistently and immediately following the behavior. Remember one thing, the, the, the timing of putting this intervention is very, very crucial. It never happens that the child will have a misbehavior and then five days later, you tell that, you know, five days ago you said that, so all right, this is a consequence. No, it never happens. And also being consistent because many times that is a problem. Many times you will see that the, the, the mom is doing something, dad is doing something and grandpa is doing something else. Okay, that's not going to work. Now then come to the, the next, you know, subsequent sessions is basically how to attending to the, to the child's, you know, like child's behavior. Um, and one of, the, one of the important thing here is basically teaching the differential reinforcement. Often we give an example, the manual also talks about giving an example of uh, asking parents, tell me about the best supervisor you had in your life. What made the best supervisor, best supervisor? Yeah, he was very attentive to my need. Uh, okay, yeah, he wanted, he had very clear cut expectation and he, he gave me a lot of praise when I, when I did that. Oh, right, what, was, what about the worst supervisor? They will say something and then asking the parents, rate yourself how you would like to rate yourself as a supervisor of your, of your child. Surprisingly, many parents will rate them pretty low. And so basically help them how you can be the best supervisor for your, for your child. Attend to the positive uh, behavior and ignoring some of the minor negative behavior. Praising is very, very important. Everybody likes to be praised for some good things that you have done. Uh, many times for a kid who are having a lot of tantrum issue, uh, you have to even like praise in an absence of common misbehavior. And you have to praise a spontaneous compliance, like, you know, your child will never clean up after himself. All right, one day he does it. Wow, that's great. That is how you are, that, that's great cleaning, cleaning yourself up. 
and also the one-to-one -one time so that you know you are attending to the child's need and also teaching about uh, you know like giving effective comments and avoid ambiguous comments ambiguous comments example like say i want my child to do the homework and the way i ask do you like to do, do your homework all right the answer can be yes or no so the child is confused and so that is important okay so then you implement a behavior contract use positive reinforcement you know uh, you implement disciplinary method and remember that when you are talking about the positive reinforcement and disciplinary method always establish a positive reinforcement first and then you go for the disciplinary method and that can be time out but that needs to be brief remember when we hear that parents are telling us that he did this and after that he is grounded for the rest of the week no that's very cruel and <coughs> excuse me so when there is um, so and always there should be a, a kind of target for the child to achieve to be ungrounded or you know like coming out of the timeout there is also the cost of you know the uh, the response cost like you did something so the poker chips are gone or the point system you know the star system everything is gone or i'm taking away three of your stars for doing that and uh, remember one thing never give up you have if you have chosen to intervene because children will will test your limit to what extent you go and to what extent they can you know like sometimes kids can be very smart actually i mean in the sense of manipulation now so and also teach them the effective communication and problem solving now <clears throat> and then you expand this all these strategies to different areas and you also teach them to how to manage some of the behavior in some you know like uh, other areas like when you go to the mall or when you go to the grocery store uh, make an advanced plan actually so anyway the next one is the parent child interaction therapy the cool thing about this therapy is that it's it's done through a one way mirror and the and the therapist will have microphone and the ch and the parent will have a bug in the ear that means a uh, you know like another kind of device uh, a microphone that the therapist can actually give live comment to the to the to the parent so the parent and the child will attend those sessions and literally what they are going to do is that the small child i mean it's 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 not appropriate after age 6 or 7 uh, so there are two components one is a parent directed child directed inter inter interaction and the other is a parent directed interaction so in child directed interaction the child will decide what they are going to do during the play session and they will practice the pride skill like praise reflect imitate describe and show enthusiasm and do not question no comments and no criticism you will be amazed to see how many times although you teach them uh, you know like that you need to practice that it's difficult to you know like uh, unknowingly we kind of criticize the child for example the child builds a tower and then you said that let's make a bigger tower no you give a comment to the child and you also criticize that you are in a smaller tower i want to make a bigger tower so so these are some of these things that is being taught and being practiced and there is a parent directed intervention where there is some didactics are given and then coaching and role play and the parents are taught how to give effective comment by 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 being direct like be specific i want you to do this every comment stated positively like you know probably you know like um you know like don't do it you know it doesn't work then the child doesn't know what to do uh, comment should be developmentally appropriate so that the kid understands given individually don't give five comments at a time be respectful essential comments only because if you give on comments for everything then it is considered to be micromanaging micromanagement never works you never like it the kid also doesn't like it um, and then choices when appropriate and, and also watch for the tone of your voice all right now coming to the cbt you know uh, we have a lot of uh, people trained in cbt uh, especially when the child has anxiety or depression often uh, you know you combine the cbt with parent management training school refusal is a perfect example when the child will be will will get the cbt and you give parent management training for the school refusal and you target the cognitive distortions identify negative thoughts challenge negative thoughts develop problem solving strategies that is you know like that is cbt and there are so many uh, versions of cbt as well um, and uh, it has been meta analysis have shown that it's it's medium range so you use that as well now all these 
interventions are given in different level of service. I think this is an area where uh, there is a lot of opportunity for India uh, because I, I, I understand that, you know, like many times it is, um, it's many times it is, uh, um, many times the, 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 uh, the in-home services, the various types of services are not available. For example, uh, here there is an early intervention or head start when somebody is very young, below three years of age, you, you start the services. Wrap around service, like it has uh, behavior specialist who will work with the child and there is uh, therapeutic support staff who will go with the child to school when the child has child is having more problems. So there will be one-to-one -one time with the child and giving them live you know, like redirection and different kinds of therapies that you do at the school so that the child doesn't get in trouble at school or doesn't get in trouble with other, other kids in the school. There are a lot of school-based intervention uh, that includes, you know, like different kinds of classroom setting, in, including autism support class, emotion support class. There are so many other things. Uh, there is family-based intervention. I'm, I'm so happy that the family-based intervention, we have family-based intervention. It's like, three times a week the the team will go to go to the families uh, to the house and we recommend that when we worry that there is a high risk of out of home placement for the child and what is being done is basically you know the ecosystem extra structured family therapy you know that i am actually trained and i got the training from its developer dr goldberg and and it was amazing so, and the other things are day hospital program, crisis intervention, intervention, inpatient, therapeutic foster home. What is therapeutic foster home is basically trained uh, parents. I mean, parents who are actually trained, they will foster the kid. So the kid will actually live with them and the biological parents will basically visit them and gain some sort of, you know, like training um, and see whether that actually helps. And for extreme cases, there is RTF, residential treatment facility. All right, so the efficacy has been established in various uh, studies, lots of randomized controlled trials, a lot of, you know, like meta-analysis of the parent management training has been established. Um, and the school-based intervention also have small but significant efficacy, but parent management has a lot of efficacy and the, uh, the improvement in behavior is also stable over time. Um, and there is also like some comparison between the different kinds of parenting and they have shown that uh, kind of the same, the, um, the, uh, the outcome is kind of the same. And then the, the, the talk about the medication management and the medication management part, you know, as I, I told you that this is not the focus. I mean, because you need to, you have probably now you, you can see that there is so much of uh, intervention that we do with the, with the parents, with the family, at school, with the child, there are a lot of things that we do. And the medication is only for uh, addressing the, uh, the associated condition. For example, if a child has ADHD, you treat ADHD. Uh, and you know, like uh, for ADHD gold standard is basically tr trying a stimulant unless there is something else is going on. Or there is some other, um, you know, like reason that you cannot use the stimulant. And the effect size is good. I mean, but when there is symptoms of oppositional defined disorder present, the effect size actually goes down. But still, when you treat ADHD, uh, the symptoms tend to go down. I mean, the tantrums, of course, it go, is go down, goes down. Now, these are the different kinds of studies that have shown the efficacy. Um, alpha agonists are also very commonly used, like, you know, clonidin. Guanfacin we use a lot here, but I know that guanfacin is probably not available in India, uh, but uh, guanfacin gives a really, you know, like we, we like this guanfacin because it doesn't have that sedative action that clonidin has. And also it is a little bit gentle for the hyper, you know, high, the blood pressure and the heart rate and you know things like that. Adamoxetin is also used, you know, often commonly, but for uh, when there is ODD or conduct disorder, the effect size is pretty low. Antipsychotics are used, but the problem is that the side effects. So whenever you are thinking about using the antipsychotics, make sure that you know, like you get all the labs done, you provide proper education. Remember, because uh, antipsychotic side effect is one of the common reason for lawsuit. And uh, that is increasing in India. So you always document that you have educated the parents about it. You do the labs on a regular basis, and uh, you know, and you can you can you can do the you can do the treatment and uh, for more extreme cases. Uh, Resperidol and aripiprazole has the best level of evidence, um, and this is kind of summary of that. And there is also use of you know the SSRIs are being used. 
uh, when there is anxiety depression, but the but the evidence is actually sparse, and there is uh, and there is also the risk of the aggression, whether that actually increases activation and aggression or suicidal thoughts. Those are all some of the um, some of the worries with the SSRI medications. So the take home message is uh, very appropriate. The temper tantrums are developmentally appropriate for young children. Unusual temper outbursts can occur in various conditions. Accurate diagnosis is very important so that you can plan the treatment. Uh, treatment is primarily psychosocial. The role of psychopharmacology is limited to the underlying psychiatric disorder or comorbid conditions. Education of parents is very, very important. And there is a huge opportunity to implement some of the level of, you know, like services uh, in, in India, especially, um, you know, especially when it comes to the in-home services, in, in, when it comes to the in-school services, probably. Um, so with this, you know, thanks a lot for your patience and uh, being here today. And, uh, and with that, uh, I'll be open for any questions. Thank you, sir. Uh, thanks for the very elaborate informative uh, class. And there is a question for you, sir. Uh, Oh, what practical advice can we can we give uh, to parents on how to deal with the child during the temper tantrum for the 10 or 15 minutes when the child is screaming or rolling around on the floor? In other words, what Any, should parents do during the actual temper tantrums? That's 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 a great question. Um, um, so that's a great question. So first of all, you know, like. Uh, the specific recommendation, I cannot give you a specific a recommendation because the, the, I can give you some general guideline actually. So uh, what happens is that make sure, um, so when there is a huge temper tantrum, make sure that the child is safe because safety is important. So that the, you know, like many times we make, we ask the parents to make the, you know, when child has a lot of temper tantrum, we ask them to make sure that your house is child proof or you remove the any kind of uh, you know like kind of dangerous things around them that is very important number 2 is that watch yourself what you are doing at that time because many times you know you just need to give the child a little bit of space give them a space okay minimize the minimize the um, stimulus ar around them especially when a child has a adhd and there are so many things around them they get completely confused so minimize the level of you know the stimulus uh, you know that is uh, that is there you know around them that is another important thing number 3 so many times a timeout is a good idea okay take them to a, a room which is a little bit you know like uh, kind of calm and not so much of lights so that they get some sort of timeout and then they can cool off themselves uh, do not reason with the child at that time because the reasoning is gone when there is a temper outburst and uh, but the most important thing is that when you do the other part of the parent management training you don't have to you have the child will not have that kind of temper tantrum so often. But it depends also, of, of course, the diagnosis. I mean, if a child with autism spectrum, for example, is ha having a temper tantrum, which is related to the sensory meltdown, it is difficult in the sense, a child having a temper tantrum because he did not get the toy, you give the toy back, the temper tantrum stop, slows down. A kid with a sensory meltdown often happens in context of autism spectrum, will will still continue to have the temper, the temper tantrum for hours. It's very important to give space. Thank you, sir. The second question is from uh, Josna K. So they're asking about how to differentiate this compulsive disobedience from temper tantrums. All right, so, okay. So, so basically, you know, like, so these are, uh, these are some of the terms are used, but the, but the question is, I mean, are they, are they kind of really a valid uh, valid diagnosis or not? You know, the, the, the problem is that the, the compulsive uh, disobedience, what do you mean by that? Is it, are you trying to think that the child has an OCD? That is the reason the child is compulsively. Uh, truly speaking, this is something is not often, you know, considered as a kind of a valid diagnosis. You need to find out, I mean, this is probably something that goes in the realm of, you know, like, uh, opposition defined disorder actually. I mean, unless there is a clear cut evidence that there is a obsessive compulsive disorder present. Now, 
compulsive dis disobedience when you think about that uh, is it because of something that the you know a kid with autism spectrum disorder you know they have certain things that they love to death and if you don't if they don't get that that's a problem you know so it's it's like that thank you sir one more question from uh, shibalika and there she's asking how to convert parents to handle positively the tantrum of the children and it can be seen commonly that sometimes parents can't understand that the behavior may develop due to parents extremely important question and very good question thank you for asking this question so you know one of the jobs of being a psychiatrist or a therapist or a doctor is basically telling the most unsupportive thing in a supportive way and that is a skill that you need to develop and how we develop that is probably you know um probably basically by helping parents to uh, you know like uh, i wish i had a kind of a great answer for that but but this is like it depends upon the situation actually how we are going to tell them often time they don't take it well actually to be very honest with you and observe yourself whether your intervention at that time is actually helping or not sometimes you have to back off so that so that they still come to the treatment so that with time they understand some of the things are probably related to the to the you know to the to the kid many times what i do of course there is you know like everybody has their own challenge many times i prepare the parents that look i'm going to talk to you about something you may not like it no doctor tell me i will i can take it all right you can take it so then i start talking about something like that is what the research have actually said i said that most of the time the research actually said that many times when kids have some temper tantrums or things like that many times it lies in the parenting style then you validate that you know i understand that uh, we are all we are not perfect and so the, i'm not perfect you are not perfect and the good news is that the not all parenting style is absolutely right or absolutely wrong we need to find out what is more effective and what is what is a smarter way to handle the kid i mean i think ways like that can actually help so that is the reason you build the alliance with the, with the family at first that is the most important thing give time when we talk about assessing a child uh, it is so much important that you spend adequate time to do the full evaluation and uh, no real, i mean no wonder that we have such a long waiting list here i remember that one and a half years ago our waiting list was 14 months to see a child and to to, to see a child psychiatrist 14 months because we used to spend so much of time and to assess and then so that we can provide the best you know quality of care thank you sir so sir oh the, sorry i mean the other question was how to convert the uh, po uh, handle the positive uh, the tantrum positively i'm sorry I, i missed that part so during the temper tantrum you know the moment child shows a little bit of co control you start giving the verbal feedback and praise give very specific for example during the temper tantrum the all cause of temper tantrum was that you asked the child to you know clean up the toys okay he is throwing a big temper tantrum and then he grabbed one to uh, on one toy all right you all were then you start giving the positive feedback oh my god that's good you are now doing good excellent excellent picking up the toy all right now let us put it there so basically so that the so that the child know you have to practice something called label praise label praise means that you you just don't say that good job you say good job in doing this so that the child actually gets the live feedback and at first when you start doing it it will feel a little bit weird what i'm doing exactly i'm basically telling them good job for cleaning your teeth in the morning uh, yeah it may but at, when you start doing it then you will see that you know like um, you will feel kind of quite comfortable and uh, when you are doing this kinds of intervention remember that there is probably some sort of problem going on so you need to give kind of you have to capitalize the positive you know like uh, feedback like that thank you sir no worries just get any other questions any other questions from the audience from audience okay uh, we had a very good uh, two sessions 
Uh, first from Dr. Santosh Ramdut sir, and followed by Dr. Pratipta sir uh, regarding uh, temper tantrum. Uh, what is temper tantrum, and uh, how to diagnose, and what as a parent we should do and we should not do. And uh, uh, sir, Mujumdar uh, uh, sir explained uh, in a very uh, nice way about uh, this uh, psychosocial uh, management, like a uh, parent management uh, therapies. In, in very elaborative way. Uh, thank you, sir. And uh, sir, and as a token of appreci uh, appreciation, uh, we are giving uh, e-certificate, which will be coming on the screen, sir. Sure. Thank you. Jundas. And which will be mailed to you, sir. All right. Yeah, that will be great. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you for being the part of this uh, BLD University group and uh, delivering a very nice uh, talk on uh, management of uh, temper tantrums and uh, mainly the approach towards the parent management was very good. So I we thank, yeah, uh, we hope uh, we'll continue the interactive sessions uh, again and again uh, in the future. And uh, yeah, I thank uh, our BLD University for giving this platform. And also I thank my colleague, uh, Dr. Pradipta Mujimdar. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ramdurg, my friend Santosh for this opportunity. And uh, I hope you have a very, you know, you all have a great evening and uh, good luck with everything. And uh, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you sir. Uh, next uh, to Dr. Santosh Ramdurg, sir. Uh, as a token of appreciation, provide e certificate, sir, and it should be mailed to you, sir. Thank you, sir. I, I would like to thank the, both the speakers the, for the wonderful presentation and our HOD, sir, and the university for, the, uh, for providing an opportunity. And uh, last but, but not the least, the audience for their active participation. Thank you. Thank you, Anandam. Okay. See you. Bye bye.